Hello and welcome to the Mexop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration, just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. Right. So now we're ready to program toolpath on it. So we switch back to the mill module and let's look at programming the sheet. So here we wanted to go ahead and uh, profile cut these out, right? Yes. Okay. So here's how I'm going to program it. So I'm going to first define my machining process for two and three axis. We would set it to three axis. Mm -hmm. Then the next step is to select the post process and this would be the uh, machine tool or machine controller you're working with and we currently have posts for over 225 plus different machine controllers, machines and controllers included, so which covers a wide range of machine tools that are out there. So we use the OSIA inch right now. Okay, so we'll go down on the list and we'll make sure we select OSI on the list. And we have posts for inch and metric outputs, yep. optic inch, and we could choose the output extension to be NC or whatever is the preferred extension. It's NC, yes. Now the next step I would like to do here is uh, process these toolpaths in here. So I want to define some tools and then program toolpaths. Now before I do that I want to make sure my orientation looks correct and you can see that the origin is over on the southwest corner. So we'll go ahead and build our workpiece. Create a stock and are these going to be three quarter inch panels? Yes. Okay so we'll put in a height as 0.75. I can also just pick the top of the panel to be on the zero, so it's flush to the edge of the stock sheet. So you'll notice that the stock is going to be 4 by 8 and the zero is set right up to the top. So your stock is defined. The next step is to select the operation. So we would want to profile cut these. Two axis profiling. You select the features for profiling. Click on select curve edge regions and I could drag a window to select all of these geometries. The next step after you make your selection for the part regions, you make a selection for the tool. You could click on your uh, tool, create edit tool, and you can pick the type of tool. We have ball mills, flat mills, corner radius, tools for engraving, chamfer, taper. You could use face mills, dovetail cutters, fillet mills, lollipop cutters and form tools on a profiling operation. So in this particular step you would specify the cutter properties. So is this going to be a 3 8 or a quarter inch yeah. mill? Yeah, 3 8 Okay, we'll put in 3 8 We'll specify, call it flat 3 8 And you can establish all the properties in here. Set your tool number, your material. Go over to feeds and speeds, choose load from file and you can choose the type of material you're working with and you can update this list to have different varieties of wood added in here. You can set the okay. surface speed, the feed per tooth is the property of cutter and uh, the system can give you recommendations on the feed and speed. So if I pick uh, lower my spindle speed, you'll notice that the cut rate changes. I can also okay. override the speed rate. I can say I want to go only at 75 inches per minute. And this information gets updated in here. I save this up as a new tool and I can save the tool out to a library. So uh, the next uh, part I'm going to be cutting it will be from the library. Uh, okay. The next step is to go to your feeds and speeds. You can see load from tool. It's loading it from the tool. You have your clearance, which is the safety plane for all the transfer motions. It's defined to be automatic, which means it will automatically clear the maximum height of the stock or the part, whichever is higher. In this case, it's going to be a quarter inch above. In the cut okay. parameters, you could choose whether you want to cut outside or inside. You could choose your cut direction. So all these settings controls are offered in the cut parameters. And also I've chosen this option called use midpoint of the longest edge. Mm -hmm. This will ensure that uh, the cutter will not enter in uh, one of the end points right. where the start point of the actual geometry is. It will establish the midpoint of the longest edge. So in this case, it's the good. longest will pick that automatically. And this is, this is especially very useful for you know cabinet work, woodworking applications where you want to ramp in along the midpoint of the longest edge. Mm -hmm. And then you go down to cut levels here, you specify the total depth. So if you want to go, uh, you know, three eighths, uh, three quarters, or whatever the depth is, you can just type in here. If you want to put in three quarters, I can just type in the depth. Okay. 
and it'll compute the total depth in here. If you want to go slightly into your spoil board, you can add a thousand or something like that. Right. You can specify those parameters, and then right in here, you specify your entry and exit. Now, uh, going back to cut levels, if you want to split this up into more than one level, you can say you want to go 316 per cut. You can break it up into okay. multiple things. Sure. Or if you want to leave like an onion skin and go back and do a written onion skin, you can right. specify to go only 700,000 deep on the first cut, and then you can go back and do another cut to clear it up. Uh, if it's vacuum gotcha. held, then you should be fine. Okay. Entry and exit, you can do lines and arcs, you can ramp in. Uh, if you choose to do lines and arcs, you can specify, uh, in this case, I could do a linear. I could specify the parameters in here uh, for, you can say, go like a 50,000 linear entry. I can give it an angle in here, maybe a two degree, and then a height for, for it. I could say 0.75, the same as the total height. And I could do the same step for the exit as well. So basically use a linear with these parameters in here. And I can apply entry and exit if you're doing multiple levels. You can do it for each level. You can also have an overlap distance in here. So that way you go past the entry point when you before you leave it. I could say put a oh, okay. half an inch overlap distance. And you can set any additional parameters like arc fitting. You can also do sorting in here and pick generate. So in this process, it's going to process your tool pad. And you can see here it's ramping along this curve path as you yeah. Not just plunging it; it's ramping, and I could right. change its angle in here. So right in here, I could specify it to be like a 10 degree. It's going to ramp along a 10 degree path, as you notice. Okay. And it's ramping in here. At um, you know, the height is set to three quarter. I can lower it down to maybe just you know 0.15. So it's going to be as much of you know, a gradual ramp as you notice. It. Right. Okay. And once you have the tool paths programmed, you would then go into the simulate tab, uh, select the operation, and click on play, and that will give you the cut control simulation or verification. You can also speed up the simulation. Okay. cut all the way through as you notice if you'd like to add bridges and tabs we do have options to specify bridges and tabs right in here we okay. could do triangular bridges or we could even do rectangular bridges yeah we generally just if it's a smaller part we'll just completely onion skin it and leave it onion skin is what we've had the best luck with <laughs> okay. so in here we process the first part right so this is part number one now if you'd like to process each uh, sheet in a separate file. You can export them in Rhino and then program it. Or you could program all of them in one. You could call this uh, profile for sheet one. Or you could even organize it in a better way by putting into a machining operation set. And I can call this uh, sheet one. And I can stack this into the sheet, right? Into the huh? sheet one folder. I'm going to make a copy of this. Make a copy into paste. And I'm going to hide this layer and make this layer visible. All I do is double click on this operation, remove my current selections, make this as my new selection, generate it. So I can rename okay. that to be sheet number two. Okay. So I can rename this as sheet two. So repeat the same step, copy and paste it. Switch to layer visibilities. Swap this to sheet three. Select these geometries in here. Generate. And the tool path will generate. You can see that there's enough room mm -hmm. between these so that there's enough room for the so they're not overlapping. The tool paths aren't overlapping, so you're not going to end up right. having the parts being smaller. Got wrong. Right. And since we've specified a sorting, it'll minimize the amount of transfers from one part to the other part within the sheet. Good deal. So I want to show you one other powerful feature. In this process, we are actually selecting uh, 
parts, right? We are right. going through the process of making selection for each of these parts in here. Now, rather than having to go through the process of uh, selecting each of these parts, we could uh, automate that process as well in a knowledge base in here. So what I'm going to do here is save these to a knowledge base. And what I'm going to choose to put it is I'll put it in, uh, in this folder called data. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to go down to the machining optics browser and I will go ahead and go to this tab called K basis knowledge basis and I will click on load knowledge base and I'm going to load this knowledge base in here and I'm going to be prompted with this dialog uh, would you like to specify rules since I want to specify rules for just one of the operations I'm going to choose no so it will only set it on one of them and let's say we only want to consider one of the sheet in here right so I'm going to expand this profile operation. I'm going to click on select rule. And I'm going to apply what is called a color filter in here and use the pick option to pick this color. So I want it to profile cut the exterior based okay. on a certain color that's aligned to the geometry. I'll apply this in here. Okay? okay. Now, if I go back in here and save this to a knowledge base. I'm going to call this knowledge base with rule. So I'll go back in here. I'll reorder this. So the rules are it's saved with the rules in here as you notice it. Right? It's assigned the rule to it. Now if we go up to the machining browser I could choose to load my knowledge base. I'm going to load the one with the rule on it. And you'll notice that this has the rule set up to it, right? As you see it. This particular setup in here. We will establish, save it to a knowledge base. And we'll go back in here to assign the rule for it. So we want to make sure the rule is set. So we are specifying it to pick objects of a certain color. So we'll go back and update this with the rules to the knowledge base. Now, if I go ahead and rather than having to select it, if I load my knowledge base, the one with the has the rules on it, you'll notice that it automatically has those geometry selected. Okay. So I don't really have to go and pick individual geometries. Now here's the beauty of it. Now let's say this particular layer, I'm going to say select objects. And I'll export this to a file. I'm going to call it sheet 4, right? Okay. I'll go ahead and open up sheet 4 in here. So I have sheet 4 pulled up. I'll define the stock for it. And all I'm doing here is loading my knowledge base with the rules. And this automatically has a geometry selected. Right click and generate. So you can automate your entire workflow. You can have multiple operations and you can assign rules. The rules can be set to select based on layer, geometry type, or color. They could use different options. Okay. So each if you'd like to have each sheet program in a separate file, this is how you do it. And then you right click and do a post. And you have sheet 4 set up one. Post process it. And your G code is output right in here. Ready to be transferred out to the machine. Good deal. There be any questions, Matthew? I don't think so. That cleared up a lot of crazy nonsense that I was having trying <laughs> to explain a lot. Okay. So what we did basically just to uh, summarize here was um, we loaded the file. We used the explode cabinet design feature from the mill module to basically flatten them out. 
and we could output them as just as uh, curves or solids plus curves. So since we would like to nest them, so exporting as curves uh, would definitely be very useful, right? So and then once you export them as curves, uh, you could then go ahead and um, establish uh, the nesting process by going to the nesting module to nest them into a sheet. And once you have them nested, you can either export the nest to uh, you know separate files, or you can export them all into the same file and then process your toolpath. Now okay. here's the uh, power of the knowledge base with the rules we set up in here. So we loaded one of these sheets, loading the mill module. I'm going to go load a knowledge base and pick the knowledge base with the rules established on it and right click and generate. My toolpath are generated so you see the automation built in here. Sure. So I don't yeah. have to go through the process of making any selections for geometries. And I'm just defining my stock material. And I can run the verification, the cut material simulation. Now does the stock material, <clears throat> is it something that stays the same as what was previous chosen? Uh, in the session, it would remain the same. Uh, one of the things you could also do here is um, just define a um, part box stock and give it a height. And I could just do a um, part box stock, or you can have a solid model in here or an extrusion to define it. So stock is primarily used okay. for running a verification or you know, for the purpose of simulation. So by just exporting the nest result, it's not going to save the stock information on it. It's just okay. going to save John sure. and information. So you would either have to create a stock to be, uh, you know, run through verification or simulation, but it's not necessary, uh, you know, if you just wanted to quickly program it and then post it out to okay. generate the G code output. So you can see sheet five profiling is ready to be sent to the machine. Okay. So we can keep loading parts in here and process the toolpaths by loading it from the knowledge base. And since we established the rules for the knowledge base, I load the knowledge base with the rules, generate the toolpath. So no selection of geometries in here. I right. Say, just a you know three button click, load the file, load the knowledge base, right click and generate, and then the last option would be to do a post process right. right up. So, so your operator in the shop floor can be you know getting the parts ready to cut and have all the programs in a program within, I would say, less amount of time, so more productivity. Right, absolutely, yeah. And yeah, right now, it's just, I, I do all this, and then I'm trying to convince the company to pay for the Rhino Cam because currently, we, we have Alpha Cam because it works really well with cabinet vision, and that's what we generally make most of our, just traditional cabinets. It works really well for that. But any parts like this, I always have to draw in Rhino, which I usually just draw in block form just to get a picture to the client. Then I have to turn it into parts, and then I have to turn it into curves, and then I have to export it to AlphaCam, and then I have to nest it. <laughs> it's just a... <laughs> I've finally gotten on, sick of... Yeah, well, yeah, and I've just finally gotten sick of that and figured this would be a much better way, and now I, I might think... The good thing is I think my company is realizing the amount of time that they can save in my work, which is going to save them money, so. Absolutely. It's time savings results in uh, savings in cost. Yes. Okay. I like it. Now, uh, would there be any questions on the workflow or what I demoed to you today? I don't think so. Okay. So, for this, what we demo today, um, you would be needing the mill uh, module, uh, standard configuration which recommended ideal, and the nest module to you know, be able to nest those you know, 2D shapes into a sheet. Okay. So you would be looking at the vinyl cam mill and then the nest module. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is um, put you in contact with my manager who will be able to follow up with you on the demo and also provide you the information that you need for these modules and also if you... Okay need a copy of Rhino, you can also find out how you can get a copy of Rhino as well. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I have that. That's good. Okay, perfect. So just give me one moment while I transfer okay. the call. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome.